Hello and welcome to Insight of Thalmology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another series on retina. Today we are studying how to localize a retinal break that is by reading the link off rules. As a student of ophthalmology and as a postgraduate, it was very difficult for me to localize a retinal break and even it was more difficult to understand the link off rules. Through this video, it is my effort to make it easier for all the viewers. So in this video, we will be studying why we need the link off rules, what are link off rules, how do we represent a normal and detached retina on the fundus diagram, what are the link off rules number 1 to 7, and in the end, I am going to give you certain special tips and tricks and certain logical approach to a retinal break. That is my understanding of the link off rules. So why do we actually need the link off rules? In any case of retinal detachment, detection of the retinal break is the first stage in the management of the regmatogenous retinal detachment because it is the break through which the subretinal the vitreous the liquefied vitreous will gain entry inside the subretinal space and lead to separation of the neurosensory retina from the retinal pigment epithelium. And therefore, before proceeding for the surgery, identification of the location of the break is really, really important. Possible loca localization of RB in the eyes with RRDR superior temporally about 60%. That means most of the breaks localize to superior temporal quadrant of the retina. The superior, temp uh, superior nasal quadrant uh, uh, actually cause about 15% of the retinal breaks. In the inferior temporal quadrant, we have 15% again. In the inferior nasal, we have 10%. So the retinal breaks are more common in the superior temporal quadrant that is here. And the incidence is about 60%. And if there are more than one retinal break, that means sometimes we might have more than one retinal breaks. And in those cases, once we localize one break, the other break will usually be within 90 degrees of the first break, right? And this is true with respect to 50% of the eyes with the regmatogenous RD, right? Yeah. So here uh, I would like to clarify what is regmatogenous RD for those who are not aware about it. Regmatogenous RD is nothing but a retinal detachment in which the primary cause is a retinal break. Okay, so in the retina there will be break because of some reason, reason and then the liquefied vitreous is going to gain entry into the subretinal space through that uh, break and then the subretinal space is going to get filled up with the fluid, the subretinal fluid and the neurosensory retina is going to get detached from the retinal pigment epithelium and we are going to have a retinal detachment, right? So such a retinal detachment which is associated with a retinal break is called a regmatogenous retinal detachment, yeah? And retinal breaks which are uh, in uh, common in pseudophagic eyes, that means eyes which have undergone surgery, are almost invariably located anterior to the equator. So uh, what are exactly these link off rules? Why do we need link off rules? Because we want to localize the retinal breaks, right? So what are these link off rules? Link off rules are rules to detect the primary retinal break based upon the configuration of the sub retinal fluid, which is called the SRF, right? So once we have a regmatogenous RD based on where is the location of the RD and what is the configuration of that sub retinal fluid, we are going to identify where exactly is the break located right because once we do surgery we are going to actually seal this break either using laser or using cryo so localization of the break before surgery pre-operatively is very important and that's why the link of rules are also important so let us see how do we represent a normal retina and a, a retina in which uh, there is a detachment so this is a normal retina as you can see okay the uh, there is no detachment this is the optic disc represented here and this is the macula which is attached so attached macula should always be represented in red color as a plus and the attached retina also is drawn in red marks right so the entire thing is red that means that the retina is attached 
However, in this picture, you see that the, here we have a superior temporal RD and the same thing is represented here in the blue color, right? So, blue representation is for the detached retina, okay? So, wherever the retina detachment is present, that will be represented with blue color and the attached retina you see over here is represented in the red color. Now, why is it important is because I'm going to explain to you the link of rules using this basic diagram and using this basic color coding of red and blue so now let us come to rule number one rule number one of the link of rules says that whenever there is a superior temporal or a superior nasal detachment okay so basically whenever we have a superior detachment the primary break will lie within 1.5 clock hours of the highest border right so let us consider this diagram over here okay so let if we draw a line passing through the center of the fundus that is this optic disc you can see that the ends of our uh, detached retina are present in the superior hemisphere so what does it mean it is a superior it is a superior rd right now here it is extending on temporal side and also on the nasal side so it can also be called superior temporal or superior nasal rd right based on where it is extending more whether it is extending more on the temporal side or it is extending more on the nasal side so the first rule says that whenever we have a superior temporal or superior nasal rd as shown over here the primary break will always lie within 1.5 clock hour of the highest border so which one is the highest border in this case the highest border over here is this border right the temporal border so where will the break will be located the break will be located in this one and a half clock hour area right so this one and a half clock hour area will actually have the break okay so this is the rule number one which applies for superior temporal or superior nasal detachment with unequal borders now let us talk about the rule number two or the link of rule number two the rule number two actually applies for the total regmatogenous rd in which the inferior attached wedge retina from the optic disc to ora serrata is present so as shown over here in this picture that we can see almost the entire retina is detached however this inferior wedge from the optic disc to the ora serrata is attached right so number one in such cases Number two, in case of a superior RD. So what do I mean to say is if this is the fundus and we have an RD like this, okay, and this is the attached retina and this is the detached retina. So this is a superior RD and this one over here is the total regmatogenous RD with an inferior wedge which is attached to the disc. Now in both these cases, whether it is a superior RD or it is a total regmatogenous RD with an inferior attached wedge, what has happened is that the subretinal fluid actually is crossing the vertical midline above. That means here the subretinal fluid which is present here is in direct communication with the subretinal fluid which is present over here. So if you draw this as the 12 o'clock line, the vertical meridian, okay, the subretinal fluid is able to cross on the either side. Similarly, in the superior RD like this also, the subretinal fluid is able to cross, right? So, in such RDs, whether it is superior or the total regmatogenous RD in which the subretinal fluid can cross the vertical midline, the break location will be in a triangle whose apex is present at the ora serrata, and the sides are about one and a half clock hours to either side of the 12 o'clock. That means if you draw this 12 o'clock position and then the break will be in this triangle. Apex of triangle is at the ora serrata and these sides are present at one and a half clock hours. Okay, this is present at one and a half clock hours. That means from 12 o'clock to 1.30 on this side and from 12 o'clock to about 10, uh, 11 30 on this side the break can be located anywhere in this triangle right so remember the second rule is in relation to the srf which is crossing the vertical midline now let us uh, talk about the rule number three 
Now, in the previous two rules, we were basically talking about the superior RDs. Okay, if you happen to notice that correlation. Now, in the rule number three, we are going to talk about the RD, which is inferior. Okay, so as you can see over here in this diagram, if you draw a line, most of the RD, where is it located? It is located in the inferior quadrant. So, this is an inferior RD. Okay, number one. Number two is, this is a shallow RD. So, what I mean by shallow and bullish is that whenever the RD is flat, it is called a shallow RD. And when the RD is showing this protrusion-like thing into the vitreous cavity with folds, that is called a bullous RD, right? So, bullae are formed when there's more amount of fluid, right? And uh, shallowness indicates that the SRF, SRF is less. Okay, so in case of a shallow inferior RD as shown over here, in which the SRF is present slightly more on one side over here, say temporal side, yeah. So you can see this is an asymmetrical inferior RD in which temporal side, say this is temporal side is having more amount of SRF and this is having less amount of SRF. In such an RD, the primary retinal break is present within 1.5 clock hour of the highest border of the regmatogenous RD. Again, if you draw here 1.5 clock hour, look, uh, clock hour, in that point only your primary break will be located. So, this is the rule number 3. And this rule number 3 is true for about 95% of the cases. Okay. Now, coming to the rule number four. Now, this is also an inferior RD since most of it is present in the inferior quadrant. However, this drawn, if you can see over here, this is a more bullish type of RD, right? So, this, uh, the drawing that I've drawn like this, it is uh, drawn to represent the bullish nature of this RD, right? So, what happens is whenever the RD is bullous and inferior, the break is always present superiorly. So, in this case, rule number four, whenever there's an inferior bullous regmatogenous RD, a primary break will usually exist above the horizontal meridian. So, in this case, the break is actually present here and the fluid is actually seeping through a peripheral gutter and then it's getting collected over here and getting collected over here and giving the bullous configuration to this inferior RD. So, this is the rule number four. Now, rule number five is, now what if you have a shallow RD? Okay. However, it is symmetrical on both the sides. That means this level is equal to this level. Then, what did I tell you in rule number 3? Whenever a shallow inferior RD is present, the break is present towards the side which is higher. However, in this case, because both the sides are equal, the break is present right at the center that is at 6 o'clock position. So, this was the rule number 5. Now, coming to rule number 6. Rule number 6 says that when we have a diffuse kind of RD, Okay, with just a superior attached wedge from the retina to ora serrata. Okay, now because of the primary uh, retinal break over here will be located in the upper nasal quadrant. Okay, so this is, uh, you can get confused between this and the previous picture that I showed you here. This one, right? However, the difference is that here we had a free communication at the 12 o'clock meridian. But... Over here, we do not have any communication. There is no communication. So, what is happening over here is that this nasal break will come down and flow towards the temporal side. Okay, the SRF will flow from nasal to temporal side and it will keep on accumulating till this level and this level will become equal. Right? So, whenever you have a diffuse regmatogenous RD, okay, with a superior wedge that is attached from there to the ora serrata, then Usually the break will be present on one side and it will actually flow in such a way that the sides will become equal in configuration and equal in level, okay? Because there is no transfer between the 12 o'clock meridian. However, if you have a subtotal RD in which you do see some amount of transfer like this, okay? So, in that case, the break will be again present at the periphery near the highest border. So, this is the highest border. So, along this highest border, it will be present. That is the first possibility. However, suppose if you do not find the break over here. Now, let us have a look at rule number 7. In this rule number 7, which is actually an extra rule that I have written here, is that 
if uh, the subtotal rrd okay or a subtotal regmatogenous rd in which just a superior wedge of attached retina is there right the entire almost the entire uh, retina is detached and you can see some bullous configuration also in such a case the primary retinal break will be located at the periphery near the highest border okay so first thing is that it will always be superior because it is a bullous nature and second is that it will be towards the highest border in case of subtotal rrd in which only a superior wedge is attached right so now let us talk about those special tips and tricks because i know this link of rules can be really confusing even after you read them multiple times right so there are some four five points that you need to remember the first thing is that you should know whether it is a shallow rd or it is a bullous rd whenever it is a bullous rd always always the break will be present in the superior quadrant okay so that is the first thing you should remember second what you have to ask the question is whether the rd is superior or it's an inferior rd right now the other question that you ask is especially if it's an inferior rd is whether the rd is looking symmetrical or it is an asymmetrical rd right so even in superior one rd will ask the same question whether it is symmetrical rd that means the levels are same on both the nasal side and temporal side or it is an asymmetrical rd whether one level is greater than the other and especially if there is a superior rd the other question that you will find uh, ask is that is there crossing of the subretinal fluid occurring along the vertical meridian okay along the 12 o'clock meridian is there any crossing so why do we ask this one two three and four questions so let us see so what was the first question whether it is a bullous rd or not if there's a bullous rd always the break will be superior remember this picture this is a bullous rd subtotal retinal detachment and where is the break the break is superior this is actually an inferior rd however it is a bullous rd okay so where is the break located in the superior part and it is actually flowing through a peripheral gutter similarly this rd actually was a superior rd or you can say a subtotal rd with an inferior wedge but because it was also bullous in nature it is coming from top okay superiorly so it's a superior break so any bullous rd the break will be superior the logic is that whenever we have an inferior break the fluid has to flow against the gravity right however when the fluid has to flow from a superior break it can actually it has support of the gravity and therefore it will come with more force and cause those bull bullish configuration of the rd however an inferior break will usually cause a shallow rd so that was number 1 second question what did i tell you whether it is a superior rd or an inferior rd and then especially you have to ask whether it is symmetrical rd or asymmetrical rd now see this was an inferior rd right so you know this is inferior rd you ask the question whether it is symmetrical or asymmetrical this is an asymmetrical because one level is more than another so where will the break be located the break will be at the highest border 1.5 clock hours now here this is symmetrical or asymmetrical this one is symmetrical and it is inferior rd so where is the break present the break is present inferiorly moreover both of these are shallow rds there is no bullous rd in this and therefore the breaks are inferior similarly in this case also this is actually however what is it this is inferior rd but because it is bullous in configuration where is the break present the break is present superiorly so i hope this is clear to you Now the third concept of superior and inferior RD is to ask whether it is crossing the vertical 12 o'clock meridian in the superior RD or not. Okay, so what did I tell you? Whenever it is present like this, there is a free communication. So in that case, the break is present in a triangle whose apex is at ora serrata and the borders are at one and a half clock hours on the either side. Similarly, have a look at this one, right? Here, there is no communication, right? This is the attached retina. The fluid has to actually flow from here to here, right? So, where will the break? And are they symmetrical? They're not symmetrical. So, where will the break be present? The break will be present near the uh, highest border. Similarly, look at this point here. Also, there is actually communication. So, there are two possibilities: either the break can be present here or at the highest border. But since this ora serrata region is actually attached at twelve o'clock, and we have a superior wedge here, the break will be located at the highest border. So, wherever is the highest border of the fluid, the break will be located there. So, this was the reference, and I hope you got some clarity about the link of rules. 
if any doubts you can ask in the comment section i hope it was useful to you thank you and have a nice day